you don't care, stand for the reading of the word. We'll, we'll be skipping and going around here. And it, it kind of plays into, today I, I thought I had this message for over at home, Warncliffe, but uh, it turns out that I actually didn't. And uh, uh, we, I just didn't have it over there. But it, it plays into what Brother Dallas, I think his name is, about how Jesus was four days late. But how many knows he's always right on time? He's always there for you in the midnight hour. But start with verse um, 23. And we know here in the beginning of it about how... Uh, We'll start with verse 23. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? How many knows that we're never going to die? This is just our temporary world today. We're we're here to try to get some souls saved. Uh, You didn't start out on this road being saved all your life. Uh, your mom and dad might have brought you up into church, but some along, sometime along the way you had to get down on your knees and say, God, forgive me. That's what, I, that's what I'm glad tonight, that, that someone uh, someone led me to God. Someone led me to what Jesus had to offer. 39, we'll skip to verse 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And earlier in the chapter it talked about how Jesus, uh, now, uh, Jesus was in a city and how he, uh, he said he wouldn't get on his way until two days. And I started researching a little bit. And why did, why did he do that? There's a purpose for everything. But why did he do that? He done it because they believed that you could come back to, you could come back to life within three days. And then after that third day, they thought you were just done for. But Jesus had to show them. Uh, start with me with uh, verse 40. Jesus, Jesus saith unto her, said, I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. And how many knows that in today's time where God's wanting some glory out of us. God's wanting some souls saved and how he do, how we do that is showing the light unto them. We go out into this dark and uh, this dark and sinful world and we need to show our light to people today. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said Father I thank thee that thou hast heard me and I knew that thou hearest me always but because of the people which stand by which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he, when, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Not a soft voice, not just something that, uh, not just something, a little prayer, but he cried with a loud voice because it said earlier in verse 35 that Jesus wept. He, he was, I, I think he was kind of aggravated that people thought that uh, just because he was late that he couldn't do something. But how many knows, no matter weeks, years, or months, whatever, Jesus can do anything tonight. And when he cried, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a neck. Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Pray with me if you will tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you tonight, God. God, I ask you, God, with this word that you speak, God, I ask you, God, to let it go into someone and into the congregation tonight, God. Let someone be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, Father. And we pray this in your mighty name of Jesus. And amen and amen and amen. Amen. Like I said earlier, I was I thought I had this message. I was reading the Bible earlier, and all week God kept taking me to this. But how it goes about is how uh, Lazarus was dying. Lazarus was sick and they come up, I think Martha come up to Jesus and she said, the one that you beloved is really sick. He's very ill. He, he's about to die if something don't happen. And I think Martha thought that Jesus was just going to raise up and say, let's go. Let's get on our way. But no, Jesus had a plan. Jesus had something that he had to take care of to get some glory for God. Amen. How many knows in today we need to get some glory for God? Whether it's up singing whether it's clapping your hands we need to get glory for God because he saved you out of a wicked place he, he got you out of a wicked place he might have got you out of drugs he might have got you out he got you out of sin for sure he might have got you out of drugs alcohol but whatever he done for you he done it for a reason and I and that's for you to have a testimony tonight that's for you to get some glory that's for God to get some glory tonight from you we, we, we think so many times, even myself sometimes, we think, well, God hasn't answered my prayer in about two weeks. I'm just going to quit praying. I, I feel like Mary and Martha was that way. Because it said whenever Jesus come in, that Mary stayed in the house and Martha run out. 
and Jesus, they were they were they were getting aggravated. I think they were getting I think they were getting aggravated because they knew that if Jesus would have showed up within those three days, that that Lazarus would have been alive. Lazarus wouldn't have been in the grave. But thanks be to God, God had to do something to get their attention. Like God's trying to do to you tonight. He's trying to get your attention. So many times we think we think church is just a, a hit and miss type of game. We don't take it serious half the time. Even myself, I, even sometimes I see people and they'll get saved and then you won't see them for about a month. And then they'll come back and get saved again. Then they'll be, leave out a month. And then they'll come back and get saved again. Now what's that telling me? That's telling me we're not getting serious with God. That's telling me that we need to get serious with God. Like, you, like Brother Gary said, you're getting into a revival next week. We need to get serious with God. We need to show God that we mean business tonight. That we want to know more about Him. That we want to see more glory of Him. That we want to see what He has to offer. Hey man, I feel like people's laid down. I know, I know this is a, this is a, you might have even heard this phrase before, but God gave this to me for someone to not. He said, he said, lose him and let him go. I think the devil has some people here tonight that's been, that's tied down. They don't know which way to turn. But thanks be to God, you so, you got someone waiting on you with stretched open arms. He died upon the cross for you. Not that you might die and go to hell, but he, he gave his life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said that, that hell isn't for anything but devil and his angels tonight. Are you serving God or are you serving devil? Or are you serving the devil? Which one are you serving tonight? The Bible tells me either you're serving one or you're serving the other. I would rather be cold than I would be lukewarm tonight because God said he would spew you out of his belly. And how many knows that we don't need to be spewed out in this day and time? You might say, brother, I know what to do. I know what to pray. I know what to sing. I, I know what to do in the midnight hour. And let me tell you, friend, if you're not on fire for Jesus, Jesus will spew, spew you out of his mouth. We... Uh, we, were, we were looking here. So many times we get discouraged. We, we say, God, you haven't answered my prayer. Where are you? We had a woman come to the church the other night, and she said that she was bound by drugs, and uh, she was bound by all kinds of sorts of things. And, uh, and she said she was called to preach at the age of 18, and she said she got into the wrong crowd. How many knows that the wrong crowd will get you into the mess? That you, so many times we get ourselves in, our, in our own mess. We get ourselves, and then we ask Jesus, Jesus, you, you have a purpose for all things. Why did this happen to me? So many times we, th we think that, but when uh, our mind is the what that gets us into more trouble, our mind is what gets us starting to talk with the devil instead of talking to God. The Bible says to try the spirits and see if they're God. And if they're not of God, get away from them. Get away from them. Now, Jesus, the devil isn't going to tell you to do anything good tonight. I can promise you that. Jesus wants to work with you. He, he doesn't, he, does, he, he, don't, he don't plan on, he, he wants you to serve him. That's all he wants. So many times we get, we get all this mixed up. We, we think, I can't do that. And you can't do it. But with the help of God, you can do it tonight. And so many times, we we got to understand what God has in store for us. We, we often oftentimes think that what we want to do is what God wants to do automatically without even praying about it. We, we just want to go ahead and, and do our own thing and just push God to the side. We, we want to forget about him for a little while unless you got church on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And you just want to come on them days and say, God, I love you and I praise you. And you haven't talked to him all week. So many times I remember, I remember when, I, when I first started out, about 12 or 13, I remember. And I, I remember God speaking to me so strong, maybe about 14 or 15. And God spoke to me so strong, I looked over on my nightstand and there stood my Bible. And I, and I started looking at it and I was wondering what God was wanting me to look at. And, and I started to look at it and, and I picked it up and it had dust on it. What's that telling me? That telling me I didn't pick it up and read it. And I want you to examine your Bible tonight. If you don't have a Bible, go out and get you a King James Bible. Go out and get you the real Word of God, not the NIV, nothing like that, because they make up their own stuff. They, they take out what Jesus actually said for the world today. How many knows that we need to get in touch with the King James Version? And we need to get down into the Word. I'm talking to myself here too. If I'm not talking to you, we need to get serious with the Word. Well, the Bible says uh, he'll, uh, if you draw nigh unto him, like Brother Gary was saying earlier, he'll draw nigh unto us. He'll draw all men unto me. 
And, and if you want to draw an eye to him, if you say, God, I want, I want an anointing. I want just a special anointing. I don't want what Brother Gary has. I want my own kind of thing. I want my own kind of anointing. You might say, well, I can't sing. I can't preach. I can't clap my hands. And I preached one message about Donna being so out of rhythm with her, but she knows what she's doing it for. She ain't doing it just to satisfy the crowd. She ain't doing it for nothing like that, but she's doing it to satisfy God. She ain't doing it for no one else, but she's doing it to satisfy God tonight. And that's how we need to be in today. We need to be on fire for God. And I, I, you guys remember me in your prayers. Amen. How many thank God for that? Amen. He is sure maturing in the Lord, and I thank God. Amen. And uh, you, we're going to have one more real quick. Uh, well, I don't know how quick it'll be, but we'll get it up real, real quick. Sister Sherry, you have something on your heart? Come and say what's on your heart. Amen. As she comes, appreciate her coming from Pikeville.